What's going on, guys? I'm Commander Restless Corpse. Welcome back to Elite Dangerous. Now, today is probably going to be a very short video because I just have one thing that I want to talk about. It's something that's uh, it's kind of upset me a little bit. Now, majority of you are probably not really going to care, to be honest, um, because it's about the division. And a lot of you are probably like, oh, the division is dumb anyway. Look, I get that. People said that about Destiny. It took me a while to kind of realize that. I guess I, I still like Destiny, I guess. I just stopped playing it. But anyway, I've been playing a lot of The Division. I actually really like the game. I like... I, I just... I really like the aesthetic, the, the post-apocalyptic, you know, whatever. We've talked about all this before. Just keep in mind that I actually really like The Division. I've been playing it a lot. I play it at least... Uh, you know, I get on and I do my dailies and I run around the dark zone at least once a day. Um, but today was supposed to be a really big moment, I guess, for the division because they came out with their first like big update. They made a bunch of changes and they added the incursion, which I guess is kind of like the raid, uh, in the division, kind of like how, uh, when the vault of glass was introduced in the dust Des in destiny uh it was a big moment like and it was actually real whoa oh i gotta go back this way it was actually really awesome in destiny when the vault of glass came out because it was very well made it was super fun it was difficult it was challenging and uh it was just a really cool moment and you know i put so many hours into the raid learning it uh doing it each week with you know my three characters or whatever and what's the, the best part about that is that right before the raid dropped, the game was starting to get stale. There really wasn't a whole lot to do in Destiny at that point. Like, I had my characters all leveled up and geared up and ready to go. And uh, anything else that I could have done in the game was kind of pointless. And, like, running strikes and stuff because the gear that you would get from strikes wasn't all that great. Or uh, at this point... I guess it was on par with what I had. Like, you, the strikes that before the raid came out, the strikes were pretty much the only thing that you could do to get decent gear. And then the raid came out, and you can get better gear. So running strikes is kind of pointless, to be honest, because the only gear that you needed was the raid. The raid gear. So when the raid came out, it was very exciting. Everybody was doing it. Uh, you, you, you know, Reddit was going crazy about it. All the, you know like journalism sites and stuff talking about destiny we're talking about how great the raid was and and all that stuff and you know people were eagerly awaiting the first people to down it and when the first people downed it you know they got a big shout out from bungie and all that stuff and it was great so this brings me to the division now the division is obviously made by a completely different company destiny is bungie division is ubisoft but the games are very similar, at least in, you know, the type of game and the execution of the game in general. So when the Destiny or when the Division start, I keep saying the Destiny, when Division starts to get stale, that's, you know, it's pretty much on par with how Destiny was for me. Because I, I played Destiny like religiously for many, many months, six, eight months, something like that before I finally just decided that it wasn't really worth my time anymore um, so that's kind of the point that we were at with the division like I would log on I would do my dailies rack up the Phoenix credits when I got enough Phoenix credits I'd buy you know some blueprints or stuff and try to make some weapons uh, just you know kind of min maxing my character trying to get a very good build but I didn't really play a lot like there wasn't really a whole lot to do there was no reason to really grind missions other than the Phoenix credits any gear that I found was go wasn't going to be any better than the gear that I had. I had all 31 gear. Um, so when they announced the patch and they announced all the changes, uh, a lot of the changes kind of worried some people. A lot of the, and some of the changes were, you know, those the kinds of changes where you're like, oh man, I can't wait for these. Or, you know, uh, adding gear sets and stuff like that, higher level gear than what we could find now. They added a gear score. Uh, which you can use to see like where you are. Obviously, if you find something of higher gear score than what you have, it's going to be better, in theory. 
And I say in theory because of the way the gear works there. It like, you know, it's an RNG type of thing. So sometimes you might find something that's quote unquote better because it's a higher gear score, but it's not necessarily better stat wise. So you would stick with your own stuff, which I'm not a big fan of. Um, but, you know, it keeps people coming back and doing it over and over and over. But I'm, I'm getting away from the point. The point is there were some changes in the game that upset me. Now, these changes are small things, and to be honest, I, I guess I understand. Uh, like the crafting, like, materials type thing. You you could take lower level crafting materials, and if you took if you had five of them, you could turn them into one higher level crafting material, and if you had five of those, you could turn them into the high end crafting material. Well, they upped that to 15, which in and of itself is not that terrible of a change. We all thought it was going to be 10. Uh, but it's not that terrible of a change. The problem is that they made deconstructing weapons give you less stuff back. So they increased what you needed, but they decreased how much you actually got from like farming and whatnot. But that's not even why I'm upset. Like that sucks, but that's not why I'm upset. The biggest reason I am upset is the incursion, which is, you know, like I said, it's supposed to be the thing that you've been waiting for since the beginning. I remember when I first got to 30 and it showed up on the map and I moused over it and it said coming soon and a free update and it was going to be super awesome and everybody's speculating like how cool it's going to be, what kind of gear we're going to be able to get from it, how it's going to change the game, how difficult it's going to be, um, like challenging wise. And it was a, a big like topic, a big point of conversation that was very fun to get into and talk to other, you know, the Division fans. Well, the incursion did come out today. Yesterday, for you guys. And, of course, when I logged in, the the first thing that I wanted to do in the game was to go and just have a look at all the new stuff before I even jumped into the incursion. So, you know, I went around to all of the shops that sold the endgame stuff and checked out some of the new stuff that they're selling now that's higher level and it's it looks really cool uh and we'll get to that in a second if i don't well you know what we're gonna have to get to that now because i'll forget i realize in my video sometimes i say i'll get to that in a second and then i never do so the gear set stuff is the new highest level stuff that you can wear i i don't think it like there's superiors the greens or no uh Specialized is the green, superior is the... What am I looking for here? Where are you, buddy? There you are. Specialized is the green, superior is the purple, high-end is the yellow. Um, this new gear set, I, I don't know what color it is. I'm Look, I'm colorblind, guys. There's green, blue, purple, and yellow. That's, that's what's going on. Common, whatever. Uh, so it's the highest level one, but it's a gear set. Now, here's the deal with high-end gear and why high-end gear was so great. Every high-end piece of gear has a specific talent on it that is just on the gear. Like, you don't need a certain amount of stats to reach that talent. High-end gear has a free talent on it, plus the possibility of having other talents that you would need specific stats to be able to use. So, the high-end, or the, the new gear set gear, has talent on it as well. Now, notice I said talent and not talents. Uh... And you need a specific amount, generally it's four, of uh, four pieces of that gear. You have to be wearing four pieces of that gear to get access to this talent. Now the problem is, in all the sets that I saw, because some of the shops sell all of the, you know, all of the items in one particular set, it might not be as high level as the set you would get in the incursion, but whatever. Uh, they all had the same damn talent on it, which means f you're wearing four pieces to get one talent. Whereas you could wear four high-end pieces to get up to like 12 talents, depending on, you know, if you got lucky with the rolls and got extra talents on your high-end gear. Now that, that generally only goes for weapons. I don't actually know if that goes for uh, equipment, like gear equipment. But the point is, you would at least get one. So wearing four pieces of high-end gear gets you four different unique talents. Whereas now... Wearing four pieces of this gear set gear will get you one talent. And the talent's not even that great. I mean, each one, like, each specific type of set 
like the striker set or the tactician set. Some of them are good, but I don't know if they're good enough to waste three other talents to get. Regardless, again, that's not really the real point of the video. That's just something that kind of bothers me. Um, so that brings me to the incursion. Now, the incursion was supposed to be the holy shit, we get a raid in Division. This is going to be awesome. Let me tell you what's going on with this incursion. First of all, to the the incursion has two difficulty levels. You can you have to uh, it doesn't have like a normal difficulty level that most of the missions in in the division have. Like uh, they'll be normal, hard, and challenging. Um, so it doesn't have a normal mode. It has a hard mode, and you have to beat the hard mode to get to the challenging mode. Makes sense. That's how a lot of games are. That you know that is completely fine. Uh, you need a minimum gear score of, I think that would take two jumps, so we're going to go to this uh, white dwarf here. You need a minimum gear score of 140 to get into the hard mode of the uh, incursion. Like, you can't even queue up for it to get into it unless you have this gear score. That is awesome because some MMOs that I've played... Uh, like, take for example, Final Fantasy XIV didn't have that at the beginning. It did not have like an item level requirement, so you would get under leveled, or people with really, really shitty gear that actually can't do the instance, and they're just holding everyone back. Now, I've never been an elitist, and for the most part, I believe that uh, with MMOs and you know, games in general, skill generally outweighs your gear you could be in a slightly lower gear score tier but if you're really good you can get by some games are like that now it turns out that a lot of the the things in final fantasy 14 are like that but some aren't and that's kind of how the division is if you don't have the dps to be able to kill things in a you know a reasonable amount of time and you don't have the HP to be able to survive, then you will not finish the instance. So I'm glad that they added a gear score uh, like minimum to it. Now the problem with this though is, now I have not finished the hard mode, and we'll get into that in a second, but I have not finished it um, because for the most part I've been solo queuing, so I've been getting into like random parties and they just there's no coordination. People don't talk. People don't, you know, uh, in this, the, I think everybody's pretty, pretty jaded by the fact that they've been able to do challenging mode missions. No problem. Since everybody's kind of geared up. Uh, now I came into this patch with a gear score of 178. I have since got it up to 180 with some of the stuff that I did today. That's pretty good. That, uh, 182 means that you had all level 31 gear, which was the highest stuff you could get before the patch. So I'm, I'm missing one piece, so I'm 180. Whatever. Uh, the minimum gear score to get into this thing is 140. I am 180. The majority of the people that I have matchmake or got into matchmaking with are 170 or higher. If you take a minimum gear score for something, that should be the minimum that you can successfully complete the mission with right i mean that makes sense why let someone go in at 140 if it is not completable at that gear score so you would take that you, the devs should run the instance many many times with different gear scores find out which one just can't do it regardless of skill and they have deemed that 140 is that number I'm 180. I've done this group with groups 170, 175, 177, some even higher than me, 185, which means that they've actually been grinding out a lot of stuff today, and that's crazy. Um, I've not been able to finish it. The minimum of 140 is a complete bullshit lie. There is no possible way. Now, the hard mode of this incursion, the enemies in this incursion are only hard mode enemies, which means they are they have blue life bars and white armor. Uh, well, everything is white armor, but they have blue life bars. They're the uh, the hard like veteran enemies, I guess. These motherfuckers are stronger than, and they're level thirty. They're or they might be thirty two, whatever. They're stronger than 
the enemies in the challenging mode stuff. By a lot. I can go into a challenge mode in a party and kind of break off on my own. Uh, not necessarily break off. Like, you never want to separate from your group. But I could, you know, in a big firefight, uh, flank and help out the team and stuff like that by taking out a few enemies. Like, I can do that with my build. In this, I'm lucky if I'm able to kill one or two guys before I am straight fucked up. Like, got, getting one shot by snipers and shotgunners. And that's kind of how it was when we first started doing the challenging mode when nobody had really good gear. So that, it makes sense that it would be that difficult, but not on hard mode. Hard mode is supposed to be hard mode. Challenging mode is supposed to be challenging mode. In this case, it seems that hard mode is worse than challenging mode, and challenging mode is going to be damn near fucking impossible. But, again, this is not the actual gripe I have with it. It is just one of them. The biggest gripe I have with this is that, uh, once again, going back to the whole Vault of Glass thing with Destiny, it was very well made. It was an actual adventure. It was tough. It was, like, grueling but fair. And... It was involved. The bosses in it had gimmicks that you had to learn. It wasn't just a bullet sponge, like, shoot fest. The incursion in the division. This thing that we've all been waiting for that's going to be super awesome, that we have all been spending all of our time gearing up for, is literally one giant room with an APC in the back. It's some turrets standing next to it. That you're supposed to blow up, but you can't just attack it directly. There are 15 waves of just ginormous groups of enemies that you have to kill. And after you kill a certain amount of waves, one of the waves uh, will have a guy that has some explosives. And you kill him and you take the explosives over to the APC and you set him on it. And it does a quarter of its armor damage. And then you have to kill more waves. It's just a horde mode. It is not anything innovative. It's not anything fun. It is boring as shit. It is just a horde mode. And it's an overpowered horde mode that just is nigh impossible unless you have a group of people that actually communicate. Now, here's the problem I have with that. Obviously, I have a group that I could run this with. I just haven't been able to run it to run it today. I have a group of friends that play that are really good and we communicate and we get things done and we blast through you know, the previous content. No problem. It's, it's like we don't even have to take cover. You know, We run around. We know what we're doing. We compliment each other and stuff like that. I haven't, like, granted, I haven't been able to run with this. And there are people out there that obviously were able to run with their groups and they have cleared it. The problem is much like I keep bringing up Destiny... When Destiny released the Vault of Glass, there was no matchmaking for it. You see what I'm saying? You had to get a pre-made party together and send them in. Which means that you were you basically were required to go in with your friends. I mean, of course, there was like DestinyLFG.com and stuff like that where you could just find people. And it was essentially matchmaking. But within the game, Bungie knew... That the Vault of Glass could not be completed with randoms. That it took too much coordination and communication to take down something like the Vault of Glass with randoms. So why then does Ubisoft think that this ridiculously overpowered horde mode can be completed with randoms and they made a, a matchmaking thing on here? Now, I'm not saying it can't be done. It's pro You could probably... Uh, You'll probably get lucky and find three other people that have done it or are at least badass enough that they can do it. Then I just, maybe I just haven't found that yet. But I have spent a lot of time in there today and uh, it has all been for naught. Enemies don't even drop fucking gear when you're in there. Yeah, I, I would assume that you have to actually finish it. Like even shitty gear. I haven't seen any kind of drops at all. They also made a change with the loot, the ammo boxes. So during these missions, if you haven't played the vi the division, you probably don't know this, but in the within the missions, you can go to an ammo crate and restock your ammo. And these are in missions. Missions are relatively short. I mean, you can fly through them if you're if you're good. 
uh, like on the hard mode stuff that I solo for the dailies, it takes me four or five minutes to get through a mission, just plowing through everything. Uh, and you have to use, you know, you, you go through a lot of ammo. You got to use ammo crates. It's not like, you know, a, a normal RPG where you're melee combat and whatnot. You, you need ammo. They made a change to the ammo crates for the, the incursion that they're one time only. And there's only three of them. One before the actual fight, so that when you because there's no checkpoint, so when you die, you start over. So there's an ammo crate right there. So that uh, because when you you know, when you wipe in the division, it doesn't refill your ammo count or anything like that. So you need to use an ammo crate to do that. I need to make sure that I'm not okay, I'm still in the patch and everything's fine. Uh, and then there's two within the AO, the a Area of Operations. And they're one use. So if if one of your overzealous party members runs over there and grabs it, now obviously if they open it, it drops a thing so that everybody can run over there and open it too, but um, you can waste them. You see what I'm saying? Like if you end up running over it uh, when you don't need an entire load out of ammo, then you're kind of wasting it. 15 waves of enemies that take more than one clip to destroy, to kill. It's, I, I don't know why the hell I'm ranting about this. Because, again, most of you probably don't even care about the division. Some of you are going to say the division sucks, blah, blah, blah. Or keep in mind that I actually love the game. I'm just very upset that this thing that that they have hyped up this entire time sucks. It's terrible. It's a horde mode. It's it's not innovative. It's not fun. It's not you know inspired. It's not well put together. It's just a horde mode. Well, whatever. This video turned out to be longer than I thought. In any case, I, I'm done ranting about it. At least I'm here playing the Elite Dangerous that I actually like right now. Like, Elite Dangerous has not done anything to piss me off. So, uh, I'm kind of like unwinding on it. Uh, whatever. Anyway, that's all the time I've got, guys. So, if you like this video, go and hit that like button. If you want to see more videos of Elite Dangerous or any of the other videos that I've done, go and hit that subscribe button. If you have anything to say, throw it down in the comments. Remember, my name is Commander Restless Corpse. Uh, thanks very much for watching, guys. I appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, and if you want, it, I'm going to leave you guys with a positive note. Dark Souls 3 is still fucking amazing. Take it easy, guys. Eject. 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 Eject.